and 100 to 30 favorite from seven to two. Regal Reform, a 92 chance, and Tim Solo is 11 to two from five to one. Silk Thread out to six to one, opened up at fives. Albert the Great on 12 to one. Christmas Holly and Weirdale both on 16s, and they go 20s bar those. And Christensen in the colour change, now racing in orange and black diamond jacket. That's sharing the pace early on with Beaker, the visored horse, normally a front runner. On the inside of it is Isadiah. Uh, they got quite a long run as they come towards the first of eight flights of hurdles. And Tim Solo, the horse with the white face on the right of the picture, showing up too. That's tracked by Paul Mamoon, but it's going to be Beaker, Isadiah and Tim Solo in the air together at the first. And they touch down together, and Tim Solo gets away the quickest. So it's Tim Solo on the inside. Tim Solo from Beaker and Isadiah, then Silk Thread racing a bit wide. That's close up in four. At this stage, Antonus is sharing last place with the order as they pass the stands. Is that Tim Solo shares the lead with Beaker and Isadiah and Silk Thread and Port Moon and Eastern Oasis. And then comes Christensen and Regal Reform and on the outside, Persian Splendor, Weird Ale, but the great Lord Sun. Followed in then by Green Tops and uh, towards the rear, but no more than 10 lengths or so off the pace. Mizad racing wide, Sumbia on the inside, Antinous, the big gambled horse, and Molly Carew is just last. Antonus in the green with the hoop sleeves towards the right of the picture, racing even wider is Mizaj as they race away from the stands and race downhill towards flight number two. And it's Tim Solo with a white face on the inside of uh, Isadiah, and wide of these is Beaker, who normally front runs. In behind these comes Pauper Moon in the black and yellow half sleeves, with that taking quite a keen hold, keen hold is Eastern Oasis. And then Silk Thread and Christensen, and looking towards the left, we see Persian Splendor nosing up on the outside of the pack. And behind that one is Ms. Aginal with the Great and Antonus and Christmas Holly in the black and white half colours is uh, held up as it normally is. So having jumped three, they turn into the back stretch, and there's no change up front. Three vying for the lead are Tim Solo and is a Dyer and Beaker on the outside. These are followed by Pauper Moon and Eastern Oasis and Silk Thread and Persian Splendor and Albert the Great and Christensen uh, on the inside. Molly Carew still the back marker as they take the next, which Tim Solo just led. But quite a good, uh, sensible pace in this John Smith's handicap hurdle. Two miles the trip, and they're about at the halfway stage now as they come down towards number five, and Tim Solo led there. Antinous is just starting to make a bit of ground at the top of the picture with the black cap and hoop sleeves. But as we close in on the leaders, it's Beaker and Tim Solo and Isadiah that show uh, the way. Just in behind these, Eastern Oasis, and then Regal Reform with the black sleeves getting closer. Black and yellow hard sleeves, that's Pauper Moon on the inside. Wide of these, Albert the Great making ground. And then behind that one is uh, Sunbeer, that's starting to improve too. And then Green Tops as they head towards the next. And it's Tim Solo in the lead. Tim Solo the leader as they skip over that, but he made a bit of a mistake there. And uh, there's one that uh, went there at the rear of the field, too. And uh, this has left Beaker in front, so Tim Solo is out of it. And it's Beaker been left in front from Weirdale, who's uh, raced through to go into a prominent position as they begin the stiff uphill climb into the home straight. And it's Beaker that leads by a length and a half from Weirdale. Eastern Oasis making ground on the inside of it. Antinous is creeping closer still. Then just in behind these, making a bit of ground, is Regal Reform. So they level up into the home straight as they've got three more uh, furlongs to race, two flights to jump, and it's Beaker there from Eastern Oasis on the inside. Albert the Great, but Antinous is making good ground on the outside. Sambia comes under pressure as they race down towards the final flight, none going better than the big gambled horse, Antinous, with the hoop sleeves nearest to the running rail, but coming with it is Christmas Holly in the black and white half colours as they race down towards the second last. Antinous and Christmas Holly, who's got finishing speed. Antinous and Christmas Holly, these are drawn well clear of Albert the Great and Eastern Oasis as they race inside the final furlong. The match up front is being won by Antinous is just going on. Christmas Holly will not be denied and puts in a big finish. Antinous finds more and up towards the line. Norcom Wire drives home his first winner of the season. And Antinous wins. Christmas Holly is second. It's going to be close for third. Albert the Great just third with Eastern Oasis in four. And then behind these came Persian Splendor, followed in by the top weight, Sambia and Beaker and Weird and Regal Reform. Then came Green Tops and Christensen and Molly Carew and Isadiah and Pauper Moon, followed by Silk Thread and behind Silk Thread finished Mizaj. Tim Solo fell, the horse is uh, just slightly injured and also brought down at the rear of the field was Lord Sun. But the result of this John Smith's bitter handicap hurdle, it's a win in spectacular fashion for the horse that was be best back this morning. That's number nine, Antonus, the three to one favorite. This one owned by Colonel Dick Warden, trained at uh, Morton by Peter Easterby and ridden by Lorcan Wire. 
and uh, Lorcan's first winner of the season. Second is number seven, Christmas Holly. Third, Albert the Great. Fourth, Eastern Oasis.